Hello everyone, I have another story to read for you. This is a new one that I've not read to you before. This is called A Palomando's Dream by Patricia Polacco. Patricia Polacco is one of my favorite authors. She writes so many books and she does a lot of good illustrations. So she does the pictures and the words. She's a great author if there's somebody you ever want to look up. And what do we call this? Does anyone remember what this thing is called that goes in, around the book? This is called the dust jacket, right? And I'm actually going to take it off because it gets in the way sometimes. So this book is A Pelamondo's Dream. Once there was a very drab village. Now the word drab means kind of boring or plain. Once there was a very drab village. So drab, in fact, that the road leading to it was overgrown from a lack of visitors and interests. There wasn't much to do there, especially for a little boy named Apelamondo, a boy who loved to dream. For him, dreams were magic chariots pulled through his mind by galloping hues of color. For him, dreaming was a way of life. He dreamt so much of the time that the villagers began to talk. There goes the slow Apelmondo, they said. They called after him. He'll never amount to much. He never does anything useful. He dreams the day away. Apelmondo had four good friends and true friends. Don't listen to them, Jefto Fury said quietly. What did they know? Lark Apostanoff snapped. Petra and Dorma Apatoshos cooed, besides, they don't know our secret, do they? It was certainly true. These five shared a very special secret, indeed. Apelomondo's dreams. You see, what? whenever he daydreamed with his friends, they could actually see his dreams. Right out of the top of his head, they drifted. They twisted through shafts of brilliant sunlight, floating up, up, up into the sunny sky. There was so much to look at, animals, birds, flowers, and all in wondrous, vibrant colors. Vibrant means bright. Apelomondo enjoyed dreaming just for them. He did big dreams, he did tall dreams, he did little dreams, he did middle dreams. One day, Lark announced, let's capture one of the Pelamondo's dreams on a piece of paper. Then we could look at it even when a Pelamondo isn't around. The children tried and tried to get the dreams to stay, but each time the dream drifted off and disappeared. Then Petra and Dorma covered a piece of paper with water from the well tub that they had been playing in. That very instant, a dream floated up from Apelomondo's head, and Lark and Jefto pushed the paper in front of it. It held fast. Hooray! they exclaimed with joy. Now we can keep his dreams forever. It wasn't long before they discovered that Apelomondo's dreams would stay on anything that was moist or damp. That means it had water on it. Mops drying over balcony rails, laundry airing on clotheslines, bottoms of fat white ducks waddling in the street. Boy, Apelmondo, Jefto laughed, you better not even dream on a rainy day. What a mess we'd have, Lark snickered. Lucky you only dream on sunny days. Hmm, I wonder what's going to happen next. Then, one day, when a Palmando had begun to dream, the sun suddenly hid behind gray clouds. The wind blustered and raindrops from the clouds and rain dropped from the clouds above them. Oh no, Lark squealed. What are we going to do? A Palmando, don't dream anymore, Jephto ordered. You just can't, Petra and Dorma said as they were pelted with wet raindrops. Lark clapped a Pelamondo's hat tight on his head. Look at there, it's happening. Uh, but it was no use. 
The dream had already drifted up and was floating towards the buildings of the town. There he is trying to push the dreams back in. The children gasped <gasps> as they watched each and every scene uh, hold fast to the walls and storefronts of the town. As soon as the rain stopped, the town folks came out of their houses and shops. They were stunned. That means they were surprised. They were stunned when they say, saw all of uh, Apollomondo's dreams on the walls. Someone has painted our houses and stores, a voice called out. Who did this? An angry woman cried, I'll find who is responsible for this prank, the mayor said as he saw the crowd that had gathered. Then his eyes fell on the children. They were covered with Apollomondo's dream. You, the mayor shouted, and he started toward them. What have you children done? The children were taken to the elders of the village. Do you mean to tell us that all of these things on our walls are dreams? They asked the children to explain. The more the children tried to tell the vill villagers about Apalamondo's wonderful dreams, the more suspicious the elders became. If what you are saying is true, let's see Apalamondo's dream right now, here in this place, the mayor snapped. The elders leaned forward in their seats and watched Apalamondo. But the harder Palomando tried to dream, the more impossible it became. Nothing at all would come out of his mind. Jephto, Lark, Petra, and Dorma all stared at the air above Palomando's head, waiting, waiting, but nothing appeared. I knew they were lying, a villager whispered. You should be ashamed of yourself. Such a ridiculous story, one elder said out loud. Let them scrub the walls, a voice rang out. Fit punishment for painting our village without our permission. As the children walked toward home after the ordeal, they were afraid that Apalomando's wonderful dreams would never happen again. They walked and worried. In their sadness, they didn't watch the path. When they looked up, they were in the middle of the forest. They have lost their way. As hours passed, the children's family became more and more alarmed. That means worried. They alerted all the people in the village who set out, set, sent out search parties to look for the children. Where could they be, they all pondered. Our people will never find us, Petra and Dorma cried. They won't even know where to look. Jephto said sadly. If only we could signal them somehow, Lark said thoughtfully. Then all the children looked up at Apalomando. I wonder why they were looking at Apalomando. Hmm. You can help, Apalomando, Lark announced. If you dream a big, bright dream, you, if you dream a dream big and bright enough, it will rise above the trees. People in the village will see it and know that we are here. Yeah, they all cheered. But Palomando was quiet. I can't dream anymore, he cried. You have to try, they all said. You must. All Palomando could think of were the bitter words of the elders, the people who didn't believe him. And try as he might, nothing appeared in his mind. There was no dream. Then he looked into the eyes of his friends. In Lark's eyes, there was certainty. And Jephto's sturdy or steady sureness, and Petra's and Dorma's complete expectation, for they loved his dreams. Then he closed his eyes and began to see. Ooh, what does it say up here? Help us. Bright colors of every hue, shape, texture floated from the top of Palomando's head. They twisted through the air. The wind caught them and lifted them above the trees. Do you think the townspeople will see them? Let's find out. Sure enough, 
The villagers saw the dream just above the forest where the children were. They all followed this vision, and when they found the children, they wept for joy. Never again would they question the importance of a dream. Now, in the, now the village is no longer a drab place. The path leading to it is bustling with visitors, drawn there by rich colors and soaring images that cover the walls of the town. Colorful scenes that its townsfolks are very proud of indeed. It's a dreamy place, a wonderful place. An old man sits by the fountain in the square, an old man who loves to dream. For him, dreams are magic chariots pulled through his mind by galloping hues of color. For him, dreaming is a way of life. Hmm, I wonder who that old man is. Do you think it's a Palomando? Grown up? I think so. All right, I hope you enjoyed that story and enjoy the story about friends who helped each other. They helped the Palomando and encouraged him and so he was able to do something that he loved in, in order to help them. So I hope you can be a great friend too and encourager to your friends as well. Well, this is it for our year. This is our last story for the year. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you keep reading many, many more stories this summer. Don't let this be the end. Keep going. Keep reading. Because reading is great. It takes you to many different places. Like this story, we went to a small town, a small village. So when you read, you get to go visit different places in your mind and in the books. It's pretty amazing. So keep reading. It's so fun. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Bye.